Welcome back everyone. Today I wanted to speak to you about competition prep and setting yourself up for a successful prep. The main point that I do need to keep at the forefront of all our minds is executing a long, constructive and productive off-season first. Without a good off-season, you will not be able to undergo a successful prep. If your starting position is in a place where you haven't built up any strength, you haven't allowed your calories to creep up to a sensible spot and allowed your body to get in a place where your expenditure is nice and low whilst being able to really, really, really maximise the variables that you have at hand throughout your off-season, you are getting ready for one horrible of a ride of a prep. And this is me speaking from experience in past, in my younger days, when I did go into a contest prep without executing a good successful off-season first it was some of the worst preps I've ever, ever had with countless hours of cardio, eating, literally eating cod and green beans all day long. That's not something that will lead to the best product that you can bring on stage. And the whole point of doing this video for you guys is so that you can actually execute a very, very good prep that will inevitably lead to you bringing a great package to the stage and a package that you have never brought before. So first and foremost, executing a good, productive off-season. The second one is allowing yourself to have enough time. So if you know that your contest prep is 26, seven weeks away, it's probably a good time to consider a good start point for your prep. So the biggest mistake I see people these days is to try and rush a prep. I don't believe that 12 to 16 week contest prep is enough if you are looking to bring a good package to the stage and Go through a contest prep that doesn't allow you to lose any muscle tissue. It's inevitable that at some point, yes, you might lose a little. However, that process can be a lot different if you give yourself enough time to be able to have a very small rate of loss. The second point that is interlinked to give yourself enough time is your actual starting position. If you are starting a prep, very, very out of shape and you have 50 pounds to lose and you're only giving yourself 16 weeks to do that, that rate of loss is going to be very, 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 very large, which will inevitably lead to some muscle loss on the way. The most successful prep is the one that allows you to retain as much hardened muscle as you physically can. In order to do that, one, you have to give yourself enough time. You have to go through a very successful season first and your starting position cannot be too far out of shape. It's an old saying from some of the old school bodybuilders, in order to get in shape, you have to be in shape. So my preference now is actually mapping out a contest prep way, way, way before your prep actually starts. So with a lot of my clients, what I've actually been doing has been a pre-prep setting where we will basically do a mini diet or a mini prep, potentially you know, weeks and weeks away from even considering starting a prep to get their body composition in check in order to be able to undergo a prep. In ideal world scenario, you want to be going through a contest prep where you have maximum of 30 pounds to lose over the course of 22 to 24 weeks. That would be ideal case scenario in ideal world. However, this not always materializes. However, as a reference point, if that is something that you are able to do through proper planning and giving yourself enough time to undergo all these phases, which is obviously your off-season, your pre-contest phase, your pre-prep, as I like to call it, and your contest prep, that inevitably will lead to a lot of success during your prep. Another point that I don't believe many people handle too well is managing your training volume. A lot of people still get in a mind frame where they think more is better. That is not the case. Not all reps are created equal. That is something I have spoken of quite a lot on my Instagram, especially uh, in the past 12 months. Quality over quantity. And believe me now, guys, retaining strength should always be the goal. What has built the muscle will allow you to retain that muscle. So do not aim to do more for sake of doing more. Do not use resistance training as a tool for fat loss. That inevitably leads to actually muscle loss because you will create a, 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 a recovery demand that your body cannot meet whilst you are in a calorie deficit. Your whole point and your whole goal in a contest prep is to retain muscle, not grow muscle. Therefore, your actual training volume has to reflect this. So controlling your fatigue and training volume is another key to a very successful prep. Now, the final point 
The final point, now get ready for this, is taking smart choices when it comes to your cardio. The whole point of doing cardiovascular work in prep is to create a calorie deficit. So your goal is calorie expenditure. Your goal is not to create more fatigue. So be mindful of what tools you are using for cardio and what intensity you are also doing for cardio. Because sometimes, and I've seen it firsthand, I have a lot of clients that get in a mind frame where more is better, always isn't, especially as you get leaner. They opt for doing cardio harder and they opt for machines that create even more fatigue, such as Stairmaster, etc. when at some points they always just prescribe, pre prescribe steps uh, as, as a tool for fat loss. So again, be mindful of your choices and at what given point you actually apply them because the leaner you get, the more sensitive your body is to actually getting tired. So like I said, the goal is to create a calorie deficit, not add extra stress and extra fatigue for your body. So make sure you're smart with choices of your cardio, what tools you use for cardio, and what kind of intensity you apply at what point in your prep. So hopefully this helps guys. If you are planning on doing a contest prep and you haven't thought of any of these points, then I strongly suggest you do consider those and take a little bit of a smart approach towards your prep for this year if your goal is to step on stage with an improved package and hopefully bring in something that you have never been able to bring before, which is always the goal. The goal is always to be better. The goal is to progress and bring a better package. Uh, but that's all for me for now. Thank you for watching, guys. Um, I hope you haven't got bored too much and I hope it hasn't been too long. Um, but I will get back to doing more content like this and share a little bit more with you uh, to help you with your own process along the way. Uh, thank you, guys. And have a good day.